Today's scripture comes from New Testament, book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 13 to 20. As I read through the passage, I hope you can all hear the voice of the living God. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Eliza, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you? he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Amen. Dear Christians, I'm sure that you all know King David. We have not met him in person. I'm sure that there's no one that you do not know him. If you know, if you are familiar with the Bible, then you should be familiar with this name. The name David occurs 800 times in the Bible. It is the most frequently mentioned name uh, in the entire Bible. God surely loved King David so dearly. And our Lord loved David so much that when he blesses someone, he said, I will bless you the way I did to my servant David. And when he punishes anyone, he said, you are not like my servant David. David was the reference uh, to blessings, and he was the example of what a selected person by the Lord is like. In this way, our Lord loved David so dearly. But what kind of person David was? He was a shepherd, and he tended the flocks in his boyhood. Our Lord uh, one day told the prophet Samuel that I don't like King Samuel. I don't think he's the right person to be the king. So go and visit Jesse's and select one among Jesse's sons and secretly anoint him king of Israel. In fact, this was a very risky thing. But Prophet Samuel visited Jesse's place with a flask of oil and uh, told Jesse that in your family, uh, there is a future king uh, of the Israel. So please show me uh, the your sons. And Jesse uh, had eight sons, but he only showed the prophet seven sons. And he lined his sons uh, in front of the prophet Samuel. And uh, the prophet Samuel examined each and one of them but uh, he was not really convinced that uh, one of them, one of the seven sons, were the chosen one by the Lord. And Samuel then asked the Jesse that, uh, are these sons, seven sons, all you have? And the Jesse replied to him that, I have one more. And let me add uh, some more uh, to the episode. Uh, the Jesse might have uh, told the shepherd that, uh, well, I do have one uh, more sons, but I don't think he is the right one. He is currently herding the family flocks. Uh, he is a shepherd. Uh, but I really don't think that he would be the one that you uh, you are looking for. But the but the Samuel uh, asked the Jesse to bring him uh, to him anyhow. So Jesse um, 
so did so. And then Prophet Samuel examined the Je uh, David, and he right away he knew that he was the one uh, selected by the Lord. So that's how he anointed. Uh, he uh, the David was anointed uh, by um, the the Sam uh, by the Samuel uh, to be the king of Israel. So what we can uh, find out from the, this incident is that even uh, David was not even um, the uh, recognized by his own family members as the king, uh, the next king, because even uh, his family members thought that he does not look like what a king should look. But um, the the Samuel. Uh, answer to him that um, even if uh, he may not look like a king, I will look uh, uh, sees at the center of our heart, uh, and that's how uh, he could become the the king of Israel. I'm sure that you are all familiar with the story of the story of the uh, battle between David and the Goliath, and. The, when uh, David uh, was bold enough to confront the giant, uh, he made a great confession before um, uh, uh, encountering the giant Goliath. He says that the war belongs to the God. And the war uh, does not uh, belong uh, to the human beings, and then the war belongs to the Lord. And he made this great confession. Uh, and a great faith to the Lord. And then that's uh, who the King David was. And even if uh, he had a great con confession, uh, he had a great faith in the Lord, he was not perfect. He also had a lot of flaws. I'm sure that you know the, uh, the episode he had and his great mistake. Uh, uh, he had done on his uh, the loyal uh, the general loyal servant the King Uriah and he killed his own uh, the soldier and who was very loyal to him and he took his wife uh, the Beth Sheba and to, uh, uh, and made her his wife and um, he the King David could have uh, used his power uh, as a king and uh, and then do not uh, make any kind of uh, the uh, repentance uh, when the prophet Nathan the came before the King David and then told him the kind of uh, the great uh, the wrongdoings he had made. Uh, the King David did not make any excuse. He said right away that I have sinned against the, the Lord. And this kind of the response was really amazing. And it, this kind of the repentance and acknowledgement of his sins really pleased the Lord. And uh, let, there's uh, one thing that we need to remember that uh, how what was the secret behind his uh, the success? How he, was he able to gain so much love and the blessing from the Lord? Uh, what was the, his secret to become the the great role model uh, of uh, of the beloved uh, the person by the Lord? And the secret lies uh, in that. The Lord, uh, the David, sincerely loved the Lord, and uh, his love uh, was very concrete, and he really loved the Lord out of his uh, heart, and and then after he became the king and established a great and grand castle uh, for his nation. After the castle was fully established, he climbed up to the top of the castle and then he prayed deeply to the Lord that thank you so much, Lord, for enabling me uh, to build this uh, the great castle. And at the same time, he, uh, he, uh, he thought that uh, 
while he was enjoying this much blessings from the Lord, he felt really bad that the Ark of the Covenant was uh, currently at the tent. And he really felt uh, bad about it. So that's why he called the prophet Nathan uh, in front of him and then asked him that uh, he would like to build the temple uh, temple for the of the Lord. And then he asked uh, the the Nathan, the prophet, whether uh, the the Lord would allow him to do so. And the Bible tells us that uh, tells us how uh, how happy uh, the Lord was after hearing the David's idea. He was really pleased that um, he told uh, the David that. Uh, what uh, what made you to come with this kind of great idea? I'm really pleased with uh, the, uh, what you have in your mind. I didn't ask for you. Uh, I didn't ask you to build uh, a temple for me, but you came up with that idea yourself and you volunteered to build the, the temple uh, for the Lord. And then the, this kind of the idea really uh, pleased the Lord greatly. Uh, in our daily lives, we see a lot of people uh, coming to church and then desperately pray to our Lord. And then uh, if we uh, listen to the stories of their own, we often uh, find out that those people are in a very difficult and uh, desperate uh, situations. Uh, and But we need to remember that uh, for those who are enjoying their golden days and for those who are at peace, if they uh, purely uh, if they pray so dearly, then uh, it's uh, the prayer has much more strength and it's much more powerful than the kind of the desperate uh, the prayer made by those in need. And uh, Kyle, let's come back to the David's uh, story. Uh, after hearing uh, the David's ideas, our Lord uh, says that uh, I will allow you, I will enable you uh, to uh, build the temple for the Lord. And that he says that I will uh, I will be. I will bless uh, your nation, and I will bless your kingdom, and the, the uh, generations to come, and forever and more. So, uh, we need to remember that uh, we uh, oftentimes pray to our Lord in our difficult times. But uh, if we, uh, we should remember that we also need to pray in our uh, the golden days, in our happy times as well. Uh, when I was serving the Sosomang Church a long time ago, I used to meet um, the uh, the Christian the believers who come uh, uh, to this uh, temple, uh, to come to the chapel uh, to uh, to pray during the uh, weekdays. And then I sometimes I bump into them and then I ask them, uh, what brought you here? And then they uh, usually tell me that uh, I came to uh, pray to the Lord because my son is, is sick in bed and uh, my husband's um, business is currently bankrupt. And then all their stories uh, more of uh, was of uh, well, their situation was full of challenges, and then they were in a very dire and desperate uh, situation. And that is why uh, they came to uh, the church for um, for prayer. And uh, well, same thing uh, that happens uh, during this uh, the autumn times when a lot of the mothers uh, they usually come to church for their uh, sons and daughters who are uh, ready to take the college entrance exam. But those mothers no longer uh, come to a church to pray during the weekdays after this country entrance exam uh, this, uh, is over. So that's a kind of the very insufficient uh, the or finite of uh, the nature of our human beings. But uh, when you look at the David's case, he sincerely uh, the the made a great confession and uh, to uh, of his faith to the Lord, and also he um, the. He deeply play, prayed to the Lord even during his good days, golden days. And he really uh, longed for having uh, the building of the, the temple of the Lord. He said that uh, he really uh, 
uh, he dearly loves uh, the, the temple of the Lord, and that he prayed for those people who comes uh, to the temple to pray and then to praise the Lord. And uh, he and he would like to wish their uh, the great blessings for uh, those who visit the church. And I uh, was uh, blessed to be able to found this uh, the Tomang Church uh, 45 years ago, and uh, the God uh, blessed me well, well, more um, since I was able to uh, the found four more the churches after I retired from the Tomang Church, and then the kind the idea that uh, and then uh, the the idea that really motivated me to uh, build the temple of the Lord uh, was that when I was young, uh, I saw the church was uh, my church uh, was burned down, uh, and uh, that was put uh, was caught the fire and all burned down, and uh, since then. I really uh, wished, I longed for establishing the chapels. And oh, just to share one as uh, the one little as episodes uh, about this while uh, during this the initial period of the Sasoma Church was that well I'm sure that you see this the pipe organ on the on the on the backside of me, and uh, well when I uh, the, the wanted to um, the purchase this pipe organ for the Sumang Church, I had to face a lot of confrontations uh, and the criticisms. Uh, and then a lot of people came to me and they say that it is uh, so expensive and uh, why do you want to forego on the purchasing it? And then I had to persuade uh, the our the church members that um, this, I know that well, this, uh, the musical instrument, uh, the cost of more than four million um, for a uh, hundred million, the Korean one is almost the price of your uh, the apartment. But um, this, uh, my the idea, my heart uh, toward it is very sincere, and it's a very way that we can uh, to praise our Lord, glorify our Lord, and that if we have this musical instrument, we uh, if we can use it for more than four hundred years, and then that's how I was able to convince uh, the church members before purchasing this musical. instrument. Instruments and uh, our David. Uh, let's go back to the David's uh, the the case under David's uh, the son Solomon uh, during the the church dedication of uh, the worship service. He made a very uh, the very desperate and then very the sincere prayer to the Lord. He prayed to the Lord that please bless and each and one of those people who visits and comes in to the temple to pray. And if uh, for those who are not able to attend the church for various reasons, be it they are the captives or they are sick in bed, please bless them as well. And if they uh, face toward the chapel, and uh, and that they, if they have the sincere heart uh, toward the loving, toward the love of the church and uh, and our he uh, made that kind of uh, the confession and the prayer to the Lord and when we um, the talk about uh, the anyone who have who have gone through a great transformation in his life and then met encountered uh, the, our Lord and the Sunny transformed into a great Christian uh, but I feel look at each one of the cases especially uh, the case of the Apostle Paul he was not like a very different person uh, before he met uh, the Jesus Christ uh, he was a very religious guy uh, that he was one of the Pharisees and uh, he, uh, based on what he had, what he had learned uh, in his uh, the schools, he persecuted the Christians. And then on his way to uh, the to uh, chase after the one of the Christians, uh, he met. Uh, he heard the voice of the Lord, and then uh, uh, he heard the voice of the Lord saying that why uh, the. Paul, why do you persecute me? And then this kind of the miraculous experience uh, uh, changed the Apostle Paul uh, this greatly and uh, led him to the uh, great transformation. And during uh, the 
and for the passage that we shared today, we found out that our Lord says that He will build His church. He says, I will build my church. So, but there are quite a lot of misunderstandings on uh, churches. A lot of people mistakenly believe that church is a kind of uh, the community service. And so, uh, and I am not uh, really fond of this uh, the idea. The church is not a kind of gathering of people. It's a kind of the charity of the service community. Uh, it's the body of Christ. Some people mistakenly believe that it's a place for volunteer works, but that's not what it intended to be. The church is the is the body of Christ. It's not a place for human rights. It's not a place, place for volunteering works. It's not a place for a charity works. Church is the place that uh, the church is the body of Christ. And he tells us that when the two or three persons assemble that, and then they call my name, that's the place that I will make, I will be. And have you ever wondered uh, the, how these initial churches, early day churches, were able to be established and then gather 5,000 persons? Let me share with you one example. Uh, the one day, the Peter and the John was going up to the temple uh, at a time of prayer. And the a man who was lame uh, from birth was uh, in front of this of the chapel gate and then this uh, the lame guy was a beggar so whenever he sees a passerby he asked for money so he uh, this time he met uh, this peter and john so uh, he begged for money and then but this time uh, the Peter said something very unusual he said the silver or gold I do not have but what I do have I give you uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and walk so this was a very unusual the uh, the thing a beggar or oh, was it was here and he said that the uh, Peter said that um, you should stand up and walk. And this event um, was a very shocking incident. Uh, and that it was well, this, uh, this idea, what well, this event was, uh, this episode was shared to uh, a lot of people within that community. And that kind of the very starting point uh, of this, uh, the early church days. Uh, early Christian church. And if two or three persons assemble together and they call upon the, the our Lord's name, and our Lord says that he will uh, make presence there. And uh, when, um, uh, and then our Lord really pleases the idea that, um, as we can find out from the, uh, the today's passage, that the Simon Peter said, you are the Messiah and the son of the living God. And then uh, Jesus was really pleased to hear that uh, our Lord uh, Jesus could have said that, oh, Peter, I'm so proud of you. You have learned a lot for the past several years. But he did not say so. And uh, our Lord, what our Lord said instead was that um, this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. So what we can learn from this is that uh, the faith comes from our Lord, and it is revealed by our Lord. And the being able to make the kind of confession that you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, it comes from the Lord. It's not something that we can learn from the books or from experience, but it is a direct revelation um, from our Lord. It is a selective blessings from our Lord. And we need to focus the things that uh, the, the scriptures that uh, the follows. And then uh, the Jesus uh, told Simon Peter that I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. 
So we need to remember that the church is the heaven and that it's uh, the key to the heaven. Through the church, we need to make the confession of our faith and then we also are be able to get the blessings from the Lord. And that's uh, the pathway we can make entry into the heaven. So uh, how, how uh, the amazing all these are. Uh, just uh, share with you my personal uh, the incident, which happened uh, last year. Um, uh, my wife uh, passed away about a year ago, and uh, be right before she uh, the she died, uh, she used to uh, pray that uh, uh, Lord, please open up the door to heaven. And then she made such uh, the prayer every uh, times and several times a day. And then I told her that, oh, you should, um, I don't think you need to make that kind of prayer uh, anymore. I'm sure that our Lord have already uh, heard uh, your prayer. And then, well, her, uh, the prayer, uh, was indeed heard by the Lord and that she was able to uh, the, um, make entry into the heaven. And let us um, the look for, let us uh, think about a lot of the living creatures around us. Uh, we see the small seed and from this small seed, if it's planted on the ground, it grows up and it becomes a big tree. So we can find out the wonders of mystery, wonders of living creatures, and how uh, this uh, small seed uh, that grows up to be a great tree. And then the, well, this kind of the mystery of life uh, that happens not uh, not on the plants, but also can be found uh, among this uh, the uh, world of uh, the animal world. And then we see that animals they mate, and then they uh, they they spread out their offsprings and they pass down their bloodlines. And we human beings uh, are also the living creatures, and, but we are much more special because we are made in according to this the, the appearances of, the, of our Lord. And let us now uh, the, think about the resurrection. And resurrection is indeed... Um, it is indeed the transformation from the Jesus Christ. We, in many times, we talk about the resurrection, but if we uh, study the resurrection that uh, very carefully, and then that we can find out that in fact the word of uh, transformation is much more this mentioned than the, the word resurrection. It is the transformation that we experience uh, the, uh, the, uh, within the Christ uh, step by step. And as we go uh, on this the journey of transformation, we are um, the, able to reach the Lord and then can have the full uh, this idea of the resurrection. And now our Lord tells us that uh, do not worry and you please have a great faith in the Lord because I will be with you. And then this is the kind of the transformation that we make step by step within the Jesus Christ. And that we have to take the church from this uh, the perspective. We need to know that the church serves a kind of the agent um, to uh, for us to make the greater transformation and ultimately toward the to the heaven. So the church is the very uh, the thing that we can uh, undergo the, uh, the transformation within the transformation in the church and the, through the church we can experience the strength of the Jesus Christ and then oh we can encounter, we can have the direct experience with the Jesus Christ. So who do you meet in the church? It should be the it, the the Lord. We should be able to experience the 
the power uh, of our Lord. And then that is how the lame guy was able to walk with uh, the miracle uh, mir uh, miraculously. And our Lord tells us that uh, through, uh, as we can find from uh, today's scripture, that I will build my church. And what that uh, tells us is that I will be with you. And then um, that kind of, uh, that, uh, and they, that's why we need to uh, come to church and experience our Lord and His great power and the strength, Almighty is um, the strength. And uh, we should be able to experience our Lord's uh, the presence and the power and should be able to, uh, to confess our great faith in Him. Let us pray. Dear Lord, You have established this Somang Church 45 years ago. Thank you so much for enabling us to do so. You have invited us to come here. You have baptized us, and you have made us your sons and daughters. Please make us firm within you. Please, um, please bless those who make the prayer and uh, those who come to experience you. Please. Shed your great light to them, and let us become the great witness of your almighty power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.